Shalom of Racha from Yerushalayim, Yerach Kodesh, Hanukkah Sameach. We study this evening the special Haftarah, the special reading from the book of the prophets, specifically from the book of Zechariah, the prophecy that spread throughout the Jewish communities on Shabbat Hanukkah. I would like to focus on one of the verses of the Haftarah, chapter 3, verse 10 of Zechariah, where we read, Bayom hahu neum Hashem tzivakot tikru'u ish l're'ehu el tachat gefen ve'el tachat te'ena. On that great day of redemption, on that great day of salvation, Hashem, the master of all forces, says, on that day, each person will call out to invite his friend, will call out to invite his neighbor to join with him under his vine and under his fig tree. In the most beautiful and moving prophetic way, Zechariah, Zechariah, depicts for us the land of Israel filled with plenty. Bezrat Hashem, I hope he's talking about this very evening. There will be such an abundance of produce. There will be such an abundance of peace. And there will be such an abundance of love. Not only will people enjoy their own fruits, he teaches us in the language of the Radak, Rabbi David Kim Hay, one of the early commentaries of the medieval period, Merov Shalom, as a result of so many experiences of calm and peace, as a result of this peace that we will all be enjoying, everyone will be reaching out to invite and to unite with their friends and with their neighbors. This Haftarah is read on Hanukkah. For on Hanukkah, the great holiday of light, we gain glimpses into the luminous light of peace of the existence that will be. As we invite each other to our Hanukkah parties, to our Mesibot Hanukkah, to our celebrations of this holiday, we are beginning to actualize the vision of Zechariah. In several places in Tanakh, we read of the Jewish people dwelling calmly and comfortably under their vines and fig trees. Remember the description in the book of Kings? Kings 1, chapter 5, verse 5. Vayeshev Yehuda v'Yisrael levetach ish tachat gafno v'tachat te'enato Israel and Yehuda, Judah and Israel, dwelt in security, each one under his grapevine and under his fig tree. During the entire reign of King Solomon, Am Yisrael tasted that special taste of the serene delight. The great prophet Micah, Micha, depicts a world of perfection a world of peace. In the ever so famous words, paralleling the words of Isaiah, Micah speaks of a world where all the swords will be beaten into plowshares, where all the spears will turn into pruning forks and agricultural tools. No nation will lift a sword against any other nation Though will they even learn about war anymore? It'll be so obsolete. They won't even study war. And then, after describing that, Micha says, Micah writes, chapter 4, verse 4 of Micah. V'yashivu ish tachat gafno v'tachat te'enato v'ein maharib. 
everyone will relax under their grapevines and under their fig trees with no one threatening, with no one frightening, with no one disturbing them. Simon to our Haftarah, Micha also speaks about this blessed level of vines and fig trees. Zechariah seems to be going a step beyond the description of King Solomon, beyond the, de- the description of the perfected world of Micah, for Zechariah speaks not only of a world where each of us enjoys and relaxes under our own vines and fig trees, Zechariah introduces in our Haftarah the vine fig tree idea of unity, the vine fig tree idea of friendship and togetherness. Tikru ish You're going to be calling out one to another. El tachat gefen, bel tachat teena. It is a great level to be happy and to celebrate ourselves. It is a divine level to invite others to be happy and to celebrate with us. Consider our current Hanukkah celebrations and parties. It's great to celebrate Hanukkah, but it's divine to call others, to invite others to join in the celebration as well. Tikru ish l'reyehu. Call out to others. Invite them. That is the haftarah of Hanukkah. The secret of the celebration of Tikru ish l'reyehu. Calling and inviting neighbors and friends. Calling and inviting the brokenhearted. Calling and inviting the lonely and the destitute to join with us under our fig trees and under our vines. But why specifically these two types of trees? Why a geffen and a teina? There are tens, hundreds, maybe thousands of other types of fruit. Why the mention in our book, in our Haftarah of Zechariah, as well as elsewhere in Tanakh, why specifically the vine and the fig tree. Over the years, I've heard Baruch Hashem many explanations. Allow me please to share but one. Rabbi Yoel Schwartz, one of the greatest rabbis here in the Holy City, often quotes that the grapes and the figs represent two levels of the Jewish service of God. We all strive to fulfill our commandments, both as grapes as well as figs. You know how grapes grow? They grow in clusters. Grapes grow together, while figs develop each one individually. Am Yisrael is charged to serve God collectively, Sibor, with a cluster grape type of consciousness. We have hundreds upon hundreds of laws, of customs, of practices, which we do collectively, jointly, like the Geffen, where we worship and observe as grapes on a vine. We appreciate the grapes being so close together. But, emphasizes Rav Schwartz, we also must develop our own individualistic singular personal expression in our relationship with God and with people. Learning from the figs and the fig trees, each of us is charged to find his or her own personal contribution to humankind at large and to Judaism in particular. In a fig-like way, we are to recognize and appreciate the beauty of each person's expressions and teachings. On Chanukah, we all light candles in the spirit of everyone doing the very same type of activity, the very same type of thing, the Gethin. (coughs) Not contagious on YouTube. The the Gethin 
vine cluster. Uh, yes. What? <laughs> the Geffen vine cluster way of serving God. We all light candles. Everybody lights candles. But each person is supposed to light candles, not just like a Geffen, but as a Te'ina as well. Your light is not her light. His light is different than his light. Everybody has their own light. In the spirit of the Te'ina, each one must also light his or her own personal light in the spirit of the individual things, growing individually. El Tachat Gefen, El Tachat Te'ina. Thank you so much for listening. May we learn the messages of Zachariah. Shabbat Shalom. Chanukah Sameh.